Hey folks, Chad Perkins for Red Giant. In this tutorial, we're going to look at some cool form features that will help you composite form better into live action footage or, you know, into motion graphic scenes that use lights and cameras. We'll start out looking at how to light form particles with After Effects Light. Then we'll enhance that by looking at how to create self shadowing using a feature called Shadowlets. Next, we'll look at compositing form into a scene by using reflection maps. Finally, we'll have a very brief introduction to using After Effects cameras with form. Now here in After Effects, we have this scene that we're gonna be looking at uh, quite a bit throughout this video. It's just a little cinematic scene with some lights that we're going to mimic the effect of. And in this case, I just have default settings of form, but I've pushed them back a little bit. So I have fiddled with the uh, base form just in terms of position. Let's go ahead and set this up. I'm gonna open up the designer. I'm gonna choose the uh, base form block down here, go to the control section, I'm gonna change the base form type to OBJ model, click choose OBJ, and I'm going to click on cone and click OK. I'm also going to go to particle type and change the type from sphere to sprites. I wanna have these sprites here, we're gonna change this in a second, but I'm gonna click on choose sprite, go down to 3D geometric shapes, and click on sphere four. So again, this is just a flat image, but it's a 3D render. So it's a flat image of a 3D render. It's just a you know, 2D image that looks kind of 3D-ish. So I'm gonna click OK. So we wanna make sure that that's a sprite so it constantly faces the camera. Now, I can't really see what's going on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on size rotation and change the size to, I don't know, about 36, let's say. I'm gonna go ahead and click apply here. Now, these don't really mesh in our scene very well color-wise, so I'm gonna go back to Particle, change it from Sprite to Sprite Colorize so that I can tint this, and I'm gonna go ahead and go to the Color Swatch to do just that, and I'm gonna change the uh, HSV values to about, uh, about 170, 70, and 20, let's say. So, we're all set up and ready to go, and I actually have created a light in my scene, and I put it in the right spot, and now I wanna turn on shading by going to the shading area and turn on shading so that the form particles will react to the After Effects lights. And all you have to do to do that again is take shading from off to on. Now, after doing that here, our particles actually get darker and there's no sense of light. What's going on? Well, in a lot of cases, maybe even most cases, when this happens, it's because your light is not in proximity of the form particles. Oftentimes you gotta move things in Z space, uh, the particles or the form, and so that the light is actually hitting the form particles. In this case, I've already adjusted that, so the light is hitting the form particles, but we're not seeing it because the radius of the light is controlled by the nominal distance value here in the shading area in form. So if I crank up nominal distance and keep cranking, there we go. We're starting to get the influence of this light on our form particles. Now, by the way, you will notice that I am using adaptive resolution. Down here, you'll see this little lightning bolt thing. We get this adaptive resolution so that we can see what's happening as we adjust this. Now, a lot of times with lights and cameras, um, I like to set this to adaptive resolution so I could see what's going on. Whereas when I'm using form without lights and cameras or with other values and properties, I like this best set to off. But you know, that's just how I do things. You can do things however you'd like. I'm not your mom. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna select this point light and I wanna show you this. This is really cool. If I hit press Command D on the Mac, Control D on the PC, I can duplicate this light, move this bad dude over and look at this. It's actually using multiple lights in our scene. Once you turn shading on for form, basically any lights in your scene are going to light the form particles. Now I could go back to form here and we have a few options. We have specular amount and sharpness. We have diffuse. So if we want to make these uh, particles just like a little bit brighter to uh, receive more of this light, we can do that. If we wanna take this down and use some of the original color, we can do that. And that's loading, there we go. I'm gonna undo that. Now another thing we could do is we could add ambient light. So I'm actually gonna take down the diffuse back to about where it was. And uh, we have a lot of dark areas here, a lot of areas that aren't getting hit by these lights. Cause again, we have this cone. So this area is coming out towards us further and not getting that much light. So you might wanna reach for the ambient value, but in order for the ambient value to do anything, you actually need an ambient light in your composition. So I'm gonna right click, choose new, and I basically right click anywhere in the timeline panel, new, light, and I'm gonna change the light type to ambient. 
which again is just kind of like a fill light, puts light everywhere. Go ahead and click OK. And it makes a little bit of a difference, but I can actually come here down to form and actually increase, the, increase this a lot if I wanted to. And as I do that, you're seeing that we're kind of getting rid of the shadow areas uh, more and more. It's lightening all the particles, increasing the ambient light in our scene. And now this is feeling like our nominal distance is a little bit too hot. Maybe you want to dial that back a little bit. So we can keep fiddling with this. We got a lot of settings to play with here in order to make our particles look like they belong in this shot. And remember, all you have to do to enable this is to take shading from off to on and have some lights in your scene. To quote Ron Popeil, it's just that easy. Now, I'm gonna go over to another example here, and we're gonna talk about shadows and reflections. Now, before moving on, notice how these particles just really don't fit in this scene at all. A lot of that is the color, but even with a different color, these still wouldn't quite fit in this scene. So I'm using, for the base form, I'm using a sphere, and I have a sphere of these triangles, which are actually a textured polygon. And we'll talk about why they're a textured polygon instead of a sprite in a second. Right now, they're kind of behaving like sprites because they're all facing the camera. But we're going to fiddle with that and talk about why that is in a second. First, let's go over to shading. And I'm actually not going to turn on shading just yet because I don't need to turn on shading to actually turn on the shadows. So I can take shadow it from off to on. And now what that's going to do is create some self-shadowing particles. Now, you've seen tutorials where you can fake shadows in different places or whatever, but as these particles move around in 3D space, it's really impractical, if not impossible, to fake self-shadowing, like these particles casting shadows on each other, but really that's what we're doing. And now we can kind of tell that we have a sphere here and not just like a circle of particles. But this gets better. I actually have two lights in my scene, point light one on the left and point light two on the right to approximate these kind of like row of lanterns here. And actually I could rename one of these lights to get some different functionality. So point light one on the left, I'm gonna rename to shadow with a capital S. And I'm going to do that. And then all of a sudden now this is my key light effectively. My shadows are coming from this light and no longer from this light. Initially they were coming from uh, all lights just kind of generically, but uh, now that's not the case. So if I move this light around, you can see that the shadow moves around, which is really cool. I'm just gonna undo that. And if I move point light two, that doesn't have the cool name applied, then it does not influence or affect the shadow in any way. Now we can go down to form here and adjust some of the values of the shadow lit settings. By the way, if you don't wanna call your shadow lit shadow, you can actually click on the choose name button and then put in whatever name you want to call it. But by default, shadow is the secret word. So if you open up shadow lit settings, you have some uh, settings here as far as the placement of the shadow, the, uh, the size, the distance can be adjusted, the opacity of the shadow can be adjusted, which is really cool. I'm just gonna undo that. Also the color strength, we can take this down if we wanna bring back in some more of the original color. Uh, and actually I could change the color. So in this case, I don't want a black shadow really. I'd prefer one of these darker tones that's not quite black. And then I could bring up the opacity of the shadow and we can dial that down to taste and make this composite a little bit better. So even just having flat white particles and no light set up, Shadow lits can also be a great way to bring more realism in our scene when we're compositing form into a scene with lights. Now I'm gonna take opacity back down to five and I wanna talk about reflection maps. Now in order for reflection maps to work, you need a couple things. First of all, you need shading to be turned on. Right now, this reflection map stuff is all grayed out. We can't get to it. So we gotta take shading, change it from off to on to use the lights in our scene. So now, you can see these particles are being illuminated by these two lights, which is great. The other thing that you need, again, is that you need to change the particle type to one of the sprite or textured polygon options. Now, again, remember that sprites always face the camera kind of like this. So when we use our reflection map, which creates like a spherical reflection map, uh, it's not going to pick things up quite that much. So I'm going to go ahead and change the reflection map now to this... Uh, resized version of this alley. So now we could get this kind of, again, spherical reflection map showing up in our particles um, so it feels more believable and it fits in the scene. We can, of course, increase the reflection strength if we want these particles to be more 
mirrory, or we could take this down if we just want kind of a more subtle reflection. Um, we have a lot of flexibility there. But getting back to the particle type here, I'm gonna go back up to um, my particle type. And again, if we chose a sprite, let's just say sprite colorize, so it would look similar. Um, we, we're getting the same thing. All these particles are facing towards the camera. But when we say textured polygon colorize, what happens is, is if we go into the rotation section, we have the flexibility to rotate these in different directions. I'll just increase random rotation just a little bit. And as these particles rotate around at different parts, it's kind of catching the light or catching the reflection of different areas of the reflection map. So it makes them feel more reflective. So as a final step here, just gonna put some polish on this. I'm gonna set a keyframe and animate random rotation from 90 to zero. And then I'm going to uh, press the letter U to reveal the keyframes. Right click on this one, choose keyframe assistant, easy ease in. Then I'm gonna right click on it again and choose keyframe velocity. And then I'm gonna increase the influence to something really high like 90%. And now when I play this back, we've got a cool little animation. Very cool. And again, because we're using textured polygons instead of sprites, these little particles can rotate in 3D and pick up more of the spherical reflection map, which kind of creates this cool jittery mirrory look, which is awesome. Now, lastly, let's take a very brief look at using cameras. We've kind of used cameras here and there throughout the series already, but let's just officially use them in preparation for all the cool stuff we're gonna look at in the next tutorial. I'm gonna select the form layer here, open up the designer. I'm gonna select the base form here and then go into base form type and change this to OBJ model. Choose OBJ and I'm actually gonna click on city here and click okay. And I'm actually gonna change the particles from edges to volume to use the volume here. And I'm gonna take the particle density down to about uh, maybe 38%, that sounds pretty good. Let's also click on size rotation maybe and bump up these particles just like a little bit, maybe bump up the randomness. And uh, it's looking pretty cool. Go ahead and click apply here. Actually, let's just change the color very quickly. I'm gonna go to particle, click on the color swatch, and um, let's just adjust it, get a nice little like uh, orangey color in there. And let's make it more saturated, but uh, not super bright. Then we get this kind of cool, fiery look. Now, if we were using this city made out of particles for like some kind of like, you know, user interface element or something like that, um, we'd probably want to rotate around it, you know, like we're going to go infiltrate this building, whatever. Um, and if we're going to base form, we could rotate this, but just on one axis and it gets, gets kind of tough to kind of like navigate around in a really sexy way. So uh, we again, we could also go to World Transform, but we're gonna have the same issues there as well. So really the great solution here is by using an After Effects camera. So in the timeline panel here in a blank spot, I'm gonna right click, choose new camera. I'm gonna use the basic uh, settings here, the preset of 50 millimeters. In the next tutorial, we'll talk a little bit more about focal length and some cool tricks you could do with it. But for now, we'll just stick to a quote unquote regular focal length. I'll click okay and there we have it. But now the, the benefit is that I can actually use the unified camera tool and use all of these tricks and tools to navigate around our form particles. So I'm right clicking to zoom in. I could left click to kind of like orbit around. I could middle mouse button click to dolly around the same way you would any other thing that you would be doing in After Effects. And this is just a much easier way to navigate our scene. And again, we'll get into creating a shallow depth of field and a bunch of other cool tricks in the, uh, the next tutorial to take this a little bit further. But already you can see the value of using cameras with form. So there you have it, folks. Some great tools to use for compositing form particles into your footage. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. Shout out to Pond5 for all the super dope music I used in this tutorial.